Well, Mark, thanks for joining us. I, I think just I want to start with the president's reaction was fairly favorable to uh, at least what the attorney general had released in his summary. Uh, give me a little more detail on, on the president's reaction to what he's seen so far. Well, it's very positive because uh, the, the result of that are, uh, report are no collusion, which we have, we have been saying for two years now, and no obstruction. And so this has been a lie that has been told to the American people for two years now by many Democrats and some of their allies in the mainstream media. It's proven to be uh, not true. And now hopefully we can move our focus to things like the growing the economy and people's paychecks getting bigger, things that matter to the American people and not this witch hunt and hoax of Russian collusion. Some Democrats have contended that the president isn't fully exonerated, for example, talking about whether or not he was, has been fully cleared of obstruction of justice. But uh, Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, saying it's time to move on. Do you think Democrats will move on? Well, it only remains to be seen. You still see many people out there that are continuing their 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 calls for impeachment. I mean, they're owned now by a radical base uh, that is driving them further and further towards socialism. But I'll tell you, I grew up in a country in an America where you're innocent until proven guilty. And as it relates to obstruction, not only was there not enough evidence for the special counsel to recommend charges, the Department of Justice determined there wasn't enough evidence to pursue charges, let alone actual conviction. So in my mind, that's innocent until proven guilty, and that fully exonerates the president. Does the president support uh, the report itself being fully released at some point? The president and the uh, attorney general have been very clear. They want to see as much of this as that can be released to the public as it can be under the, the law. What we've got to remember, though, is that this report likely contains classified information, methods and sources, which must be protected under federal law. Also, you have grand jury testimony, which is considered secret. And finally, the, the Justice Department has had a longstanding regulation about releasing information that might not look flattering to someone who's not charged with a crime. So when you take those things into account, that's what the attorney general, his staff, and the special counsel are going through. And if things can be released uh, that don't fall under those exemptions, then the president and everyone else has been fully on board with having this information become public. Well, uh, Vladimir Putin continues to dismiss any claims that uh, that Russia or the Kremlin had been involved in any way in, in the presidential election in 2016. Uh, based on the report's findings, what is the administration's stance as far as uh, the level of involvement by the Kremlin or other Russian officials in the election in 16? Well, the president and the intelligent communities have been very clear multiple times over that they know that there were Russian actors and other actors that were attempting to, to disrupt and cause disruptions in the electoral process through misinformation and other means, uh, but that there was no collusion between the Trump campaign or the president himself and any actor doing that. And so uh, nothing has changed in that respect. We continue through the Department of Homeland Security working with the, secret uh, the states in as they prepare for the 2020 elections, as we know that there will likely be further attempts by foreign hostile actors. And that's what the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, that's what they do best, working with the states to make sure that every legal vote that is cast is counted. All right, Mark, I think finally along those lines, talking about 2020, uh, how much of a role will this play on both sides, uh, this, this uh, investigation wrapping up at this point? Uh, how much of a role will it play for the president and for Democrats in 2020? Well, I think there's a lot of people out there who believe they've been misled. Uh, you know, being lied to for two years by Democrats who were convinced that they had evidence that didn't exist and the media in many cases that went along with that. So they're rightfully going to feel like they have been misinformed, misled for many years. And that might cause some, uh, you know, to think differently. But this election is going to come down to a choice. It's going to come down to a choice between the economic success that we've received as a country under President Trump, people's paychecks going up at the fastest rate in a decade, jobs being created at a record pace. These are good things. And you contrast that with Democrats who right now are running on socialism with 70 and 90 percent taxes, eliminating people's private health insurance and, and the hundreds of thousands of people who work in that industry losing their jobs so they can be replaced by bureaucrats. Those are the kinds of choices that the American people are going to be asked to make. And I'm confident they're going to want to keep this going. We just saw a poll 
a week or so ago from CNN, where a plurality of Americans said they are better off today financially than they were three years ago. So why would you want to do an about face and not just go back to the way things were under Obama, but actually just go all the way off the left coast and, and go to socialism? All right. Well, we do appreciate uh, your time. Mark Lauder coming to us from Washington. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Okay, Mark. Hey, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. Look forward to maybe talking to you again as we get closer to the election. Great.